Welcome back to Women Making Moves, where we celebrate the moves that women are making. This is Amy Pons, a Master Certified Life Coach and a Soul Awakener. Today, I'm joined by my best friend, Carrie Allen. Carrie is a visionary community advocate with a mission to amplify human potential through the power of true, authentic community. As a lifelong community builder, Carrie draws from her journey to highlight the genuine value of community and connections across diverse facets of life. The mastermind behind the human array, she empowers individuals to embrace their authenticity and contribute to the development of thriving, uplifting communities for personal, professional, and collective growth. Carrie, welcome. Ooh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yay. How many worlds are intersecting right now? All of them. All of them. It's Shout so- out Great Connect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we've known each other in seventh grade, fun fact. And so Carrie and I have had so many opportunities to meet, re-meet, meet, re-meet through our world. And today I present her to you. Carrie, what are the moves that you're excited to be making right now? Ooh, two things come to mind when you ask that, which is one, just personally, I'm excited to be moving into me, truly me and a me that I've always known and yet never fully presented. And so first and foremost, that move feels important and powerful for me in this very moment. And in addition to that, the part of me that is a community builder, is a weaver, is I like to say I'm the mushroom or the mycelium network that like connects all the things and all the people. I'm making moves in that. And actually stepping into like, that is my superpower and I need to bring that into the world. And so that move is very, very poignant for me right now. I find it wild to hear you say stepping into a part of yourself that you hadn't presented as, because I only know you as that. (laughs) So can you share what you mean by having not versus feeling now that you have? So. I see that. Right. And that has been a huge part of me just stepping into myself and acknowledging that this is a skill. And while I've always known that it was something that I can do, I don't think I ever aligned myself to integrating it the way that I am now. So community building was always just something I did on behalf of others, on behalf of organizations, on behalf of my own other pursuits. And so that could be, I'm passionate about this organization. So I rally people around that, but it was never aligned to just that, that we need to relearn how to be in community. And so what's happening now from a movement perspective is that I am actually taking that superpower and all that experience and saying, oh, right. This is actually something I can teach and build off of to have impact in the world, that it isn't about having these impacts for other organizations, for other people. It is about actually making a global galactic impact. What is the human array? Oh, the human array is a growing and evolving movement at this point. So The purpose that I have in building the human array very clearly came into existence and feels like home to me. And that purpose statement is to amplify human potential through the power of community. And that has a lot of different arms and tentacles to it. And that has truly been a challenge for me to understand how to do that when it is almost everything that I see and touch. And so finally anchoring into that mission statement, that purpose statement has allowed me to say, right, it is that thread between all of these things. It isn't each one of these things. So I believe that we as individuals at this point in time and space as humans don't have all the knowledge and learnings that we have had in ancient times, right? So our own intrinsic knowledge around health and wellness and how to grow plants and, 
you know, just simple things, right? Like, oh, applesauce, I don't have to buy it at the store. I can make it. Oh, well, that's a kind of revelatory thought, right? And so I really feel so much energy and power about empowering us to step back into our own truths and amplify that potential of being a human. And that also connects to supporting children in that path because children have that initially and somehow we lose it over time. And so how can we marry those things together? And in a business world, we kind of have it backwards. We Mm. focus on the output rather than the people. And I believe that if we flip-flop that, that creates beautiful things from focusing on the people because then the people are empowered to create the magic. And so that human potential to me crosses a lot of different areas. And when I connect the dots between all of those things, they come into existence when we're able to authentically be in a community, whether that's a workplace, a friend group, you know, a neighborhood group, whatever that happens to be that's authentic because we're able to be safe, vulnerable, transparent, learn and grow and evolve in those spaces. And so that's the human array is how do we truly start to amplify human potential through that power of community in a space that is intended for just that. And that's to me, modernizing a lot of ancient truths and a lot of things that as we step more into this digital world, that we just modernize the ancient rather than recreate the wheel. And so that's what I'm on a mission to do. Mm, That's helping me revisit something recently that happened last week for me. I did a past life regression with one of our friends and the first life they brought me to, I was a man wearing like a cloth and I went fishing one day with my hands I got cut by like scales and then I was eaten by piranhas. I didn't move because I knew how divine it was. And I was thanking Gaia for restoring balance, bringing that experience into what I know now. Nature is very important to me. And also when I was really deep into only the divine masculine, I rejected it. Not to the extent I didn't want to be in nature. It was, but in some cases that were, that's true. But also when someone littered, I would get like out of my skin, angry, cry, enraged because someone was harming this breathing, living entity. And the reason I bring this up is because you brought like ancient times. It's like, and then my second life, I won't go too deep into that, but it was another case where the first life and the second life we visited, they were so in tune with inward and knowing who they were and stood in their power and knew nothing outside of them was happening to them. It was for them and for the ultimate learning. And some folks really don't vibe with regression. Some people do, but for me, it was really nice to see where some of these come up and why they come up in the current day. So I really have this beautiful celebration of, and I know that man's purpose, the very first one, the way the reason they showed my, my spirit squad showed him to me was because I still remember what it was like in an uncivilized world where you can live off the land, things happen for you. Everything around you is living and not just things. And it was a really beautiful reminder as to how I feel about nature. I think that's absolutely beautiful and gorgeous because just in and of itself and we are nature. Yeah. Right. We've been <laughs> yeah. somewhere along the way. I ask a lot of questions, right? So this is kind of a thing for me that as I peruse the world and as this uh, movement continues to grow, It grows because I ask a lot of questions like, when did we decide that we weren't a part of nature or that we were smarter than mother nature, right? Because I don't know, I see all the magnificence that she provides. 
I, I don't see anything quite that spectacular from humans. And so how do we reintegrate to remember that we are nature, not mm-hmm. separate? And there are many inspirational people that I listen to and I really enjoy their perspectives. And one of them is Zach Bush, who talks about that we are the only part of nature that can observe the beauty of nature. Mm. That feels really important and powerful. So my left knee just lit up I'm trying to receive the message I'm trying to get, but we're the only ones that can observe it. And also the only ones that are like hurting it. And maybe that's not the right way to look at it. Well, I think it comes back to this concept of worse. When did we feel separate? Right. And that separateness is necessary to observe because if you are Mm -hmm. the birds in the trees, you don't turn to watch the sunset as Zach would say. And yet we line up on the beach to watch to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so in order to see her beauty, you have to be separate from it. And in being separate, we have lost that we are part of it. And so how do we hold both of those truths at the same time? And I think that that's a big part of when I think about community is being separate and being together allows you the opportunity to witness the beauty of the community and of yourself in that reflection and to offer the beauty to the others, right? And so I think that those things are really important for us to remember how to be separate and one at the same time. And that's what I felt through the man. He felt separate because he needed to get a fish in order to eat and sustain. And and then he was at one when... Gaia responded to restore in that moment. And he was, it was a very much like, and so it is Mm -hmm. vibe that I got in that moment. So I like that parallel that you drew between being a part of and separate. Mm -hmm. So within the community, you led a really beautiful session last week and your first time, right? Yes. Your first ever session of a community meditation. Yeah. And I did actually watch it afterward. So where did that, what's the origin of that? Had you been wanting to do that for a while? And what are you hoping to maybe not solve for is the right terminology, but what are you, what are, what are you trying to do with that? So let me start with the origin, which is meditation has become a very important practice for me over the last couple of years. I've always meditated in various forms, but I didn't have it as a practice that I was intentionally supporting myself with until a couple of years ago. And since actually creating that as a practice, I've explored all different types of meditation because meditation doesn't come in one form. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And so it's been really beautiful for me to explore that. And in exploring that, multiple pieces really resonated with me. First and foremost, for me, when I meditate, a lot of people offer to ground yourself by connecting your root chakra to the earth, right? Putting Mm -hmm. your feet in the earth and connecting Mm -hmm. to the earth. For me, I personally really resonated with having that core to the earth connect to my heart. Instead of the earth? No, it connects to the earth from my heart rather than from my version. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because when this came up in another session, I immediately rejected it as I do a lot of things. And I said, no, I go from my root. That's (laughs) fine. Yeah, I know. Both are true. And both are, both are right. Nothing is wrong. Yeah. I, I offer that as like how this came about, because for me, in order for me to truly feel grounded, I needed it to come up to my heart. Like I needed it to be more secure in my system, not just from the root. The root was not strong enough to hold all of the fluttery being that wanted to float away in this meditation. And so, so connecting into my heart really resonated for me. So, okay, I t- picked up that piece that felt really resonant for me. Okay, great then somatic things have felt really good. Like how do I feel things in my body? How do I tap things? I'm very empathic. And so I feel 
I feel a lot in my body in lots of different ways. And so the idea of being able to tap a sensation into your body and then be able to revisit it really resonated for me. The third part is the fact that we each hold a vibration. And this one actually came out of not meditating, but actually observing my own life in community, right? So how does this meditation actually connect to community, which is we feel the friction. You feel it when you're in a group of people that you're like, I don't vibe here. And historically, at least myself, and I expect that there are others that have felt this way, instead of saying, oh, this isn't for me, it looks like they're having a great time. Best of luck to them. I'm going to remove myself from the situation. I would judge myself. I would say, why don't I fit in? Why am I not laughing with them? Why do I feel bad? Why am I like not want to be around these people, right? Like what is wrong with me? And the truth is there's nothing wrong with me that that group is just not meant for me. And great, they can have their thing. I don't, Mm -hmm. not every wave is for me. Not every group is for me. We're all unique individuals. And so this all culminated in a beautiful meditation session that was led by one of my friends where it it literally started to drop in this meditation for me that is, okay, great. Like, let's connect our heart to the earth. Let's feel her, feel ourselves, then connect to the cosmos, feel that, feel that power, but feel the difference between the two, right? That mother earth offers a different sensation than that of the cosmos, right? And I feel my own at the same time. And then can I go into a safe space where I feel authentic, feel that in my body, tap it into my body, and then go to a space where I didn't feel that way and feel the difference, right? And so this meditation is, yes, it is about community, but it also offers so much more than that because the real truth is just tapping back into your own sensation, trusting it, feeling it, allowing it. So then when you're in situations that are not resonant for you, you're able to honor that and say, Ooh, this is not for me. That's okay. Leave with grace, right? Let it go with grace that it may be for somebody else, but it's not for me. So that's really kind of where that meditation came from. And the intention of it is to help people tap back into that, right? You talked about that gentleman that you were many lifetimes ago, I anticipate. And He knew, he just had that intrinsic knowledge. He knew his resonance, right? He felt that, he allowed that sensation to lead and guide him. It takes him to the right part of the stream where the fish are going to be. It takes him away from whatever predator might be around him, right? And he doesn't second guess it. He doesn't overthink it. And we do. And so how can we tap back into that sensation within our body so that when we're in a space that doesn't feel right, we walk away. And there's no harm or foul in that. And likely in those situations where humanity is today, if we did walk away, no, thank you. Those folks do take it on. And this is still the vibration that I'm still getting away from. If it's not for me, by my spacing with love, that's not received on the other end that way it's received with like malice. And even though I didn't outwardly cause Mm -hmm. a ruffle, it has caused one, Mm -hmm. but that's not me, not mine. Mm -hmm. And if there's another season for those relationships or, or events, there will be. And if not, there's not. The other thing I was thinking as you were talking, interestingly, where we are today in society I'm not at all surprised. I won't broad brush. A lot of root chakras are undone, unstable, upside down. And it's because we have been, let me speak from my own experience. I've always been taught that money is your value, is your worth. Well, if we think about the root, that's what my roots balanced in or like rooted in. And I'm trying to uproot that literally, like uproot my root. So I do like what you're saying about coming up to my heart. I actually might go for my solar plexus because for the first time in a long time, I remember who the fuck I am. 
in a really beautiful sense. And I wonder if I try dropping those chords from her rather than my root. Not that it's a either or good or bad. It's just trying different things. That would be cool. Yeah, I think that you absolutely should, right? I think that that's the value of meditation is experimentation and the ability to feel what feels resonant for you. And I think that personally, I love this meditation. I think it can offer so much good. And that doesn't have to be the exact same fit Mm -hmm. for you, right? Mm -hmm. Because the real intention of the meditation is to allow you to tap into what is resonant for you. Carrie and I had a brief dialogue after her session. I didn't go live and I was like, I don't like quote unquote traditional meditation. And it's not so much that I don't like it. It's something that doesn't fully help me go all the way inward. So I was kind of stuck in the middle. It's like, I want to support my friend. And also I don't want to just do something because I'm not honoring myself if it's not something that doesn't resonate with me. So it's just this interesting kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I had somebody else tell me, oh, it was a great meditation. I struggle with guided meditations because when the person gets quiet and then they speak again, I can't help but giggle because it surprises me. It like jars, right? (laughs) And I was like, oh, that's so funny. I don't have that experience, but I can see how that could happen. Right. And so yeah, some people are really good at like walking meditations because Mm -hmm. they're just in nature, they're as I practice different meditation techniques, which is a little bit more contemplation rather than meditation, right? So you kind of zone in and you're focusing the energy at the same way, but it might not be in like the same meditative state, right? And all of it's beautiful. And really, truly Mm -hmm. all I care about is providing more people the access to feel yourself. Yes. I say this quite often during a given day, I believe every human on this earth, and I think we learned this from one of our teachers, every human on this earth has the ability, like has any of the clairs or all the clairs, but today's world doesn't typically lend itself to just sit with that and exercise it. What I've learned about myself is I need my physical body to be distracted, (laughs) to be able to go inward. So one could say like in yours, when you tap, that could be something, but then like, it's a different type of distraction where the MFR is like, well, I won't go into it. It doesn't matter, but that's the way I, my physical body needs to be active when I want to go inward, but not so active that it takes me out of the moment. It's hard to explain. Hey, it's like you find those moments, right? Like I do acupuncture and Mm. you have to lay still. And so it's a bit of a forced meditation, right? And so, um, well, I, I get it. No, no, no. I know what you mean. Try to leverage that to say, okay, I'm going to acupuncture. I don't, I don't have to lay here for 30 minutes. I get to lay here for 30 minutes and meditate or contemplate or whatever feels really resonant. Some days the brain is too active for me to be able to truly meditate. And then there's other days where it is a very, very deep meditation. But I think what you, and I don't want to assume for you, but the fascia holds energy and emotions and emotions Mm -hmm. are energy and motion. Mm -hmm. And so you are in doing that release is similar to an acupuncture where an acupuncture is trying to get the energy to move, right? So it creates it. It's an enhancement to be able to meditate because it's speeding you up, jumping you into the deep end, if you will, of allowing that energy to already start to move for you. And so and that's, a, that's how I roll. Yeah. Throw me in the deep end, fast track me. I got this. Yeah. All the things. And it's interesting you say that because when there is a stuck point, I intentionally send energy there. Mm-hmm. And so I am moving energy and so is my healer. So it's a, mm-hmm. uh, if anyone out there, MFR, it's, freaking amazing I wish I could do it to myself yeah I try to do like half sessions like on myself and it's like it's not happening so (laughs) thank you for sharing that about a community meditation and you're doing another one soon right yeah it's not on the books yet but it will be on the books soon and um, there's going to be many more of those to come because it felt it felt very resonant for everyone and I have some more to offer so yeah of course you do always 
So Carrie, what, along with your meditations, what else is coming up? What can we expect from you? I feel like there are so many things primed to come out in the next couple of months. I'm very excited for the second half of the year. Most top of mind at the moment is the fact that we've had a beautiful conversation about how our Great Connect podcast is evolving and that I'm going to have the opportunity to use that as more of a platform for community. Those that are bringing people together in community and truly digging into the topic that is um, so close to my heart of how do we actually support people as humans by coming together in true community. And so that connection um, Mm -hmm. is something that's so important for us to rebuild in society. And so I can't wait to share not only my own thoughts and musings as it comes to community on that platform, but also interviews with individuals that are exhibiting the tenets of community that I believe are going to shift and change the world. That's so exciting. So everyone, you heard it here first. Carrie will be shepherding the Great Connect podcast coming soon, relaunching again soon, I should say. And I'll be in and out, but it is Carrie's voice you'll be hearing so lovingly more often and and, and leading and shepherding that community and fostering the, the great work. So care, what would you say to those who may be in support of your work and whether it be from the community standpoint or the spiritual nat- nature centric way you're approaching life these days, but also those who might be adversaries or maybe not quite ready to receive the message or the work. I would say To those that are not quite ready to receive, that is beautiful and honor the space that you're in. And I'm happy for you right where you are. There are many that I have encountered that feel that friction, call it kind of the swirl. Something doesn't feel quite right. And if that is happening for you, one would adore connecting with anybody that this feels resonant with. And whether it does or not, The value of community is there for you. So you don't have to be spiritual, woo-woo, any of that stuff to have true value in community. We all crave it. We are beings that are intended to have belonging. We originated in tribes and it is a fundamental truth of being human that we need to belong. And so I would offer to anyone that hears this, start finding your communities communities. It's not just one. It's multiple of them. You as yourself are a community. You have a variety of different interests, parts of yourself that make you uniquely you. So seek communities that help you become the best you possible. Meaning if you're a parent, find parents that are having the same challenges you are, where you can be seen and supported and offered guidance. If you are in the workplace and you're struggling in the workplace or you're doing great in the workplace or you just got promoted in the workplace, there are communities that can support you to be the best you possible. So no matter what that is for you, I encourage you not to feel alone and instead seek the communities that are going to support you and truly tap into yourself to say, is this the right community for me? Because there are many and continue searching. It's out there for you. And I would love to hear how finding the right community actually changes your life. Whether this resonates with you or not, knowing that community is an avenue to support yourself is important, right? You don't have to be spiritually minded, earth centric, any of that stuff. Like the meditation, you can be like, I don't meditate. I don't know what that crap is. Like that's totally okay. Community is a human truth. It has nothing to do with what you tap into or not. So care, where do we find you? Sure. You can find me on Instagram at the human array. You can find me on LinkedIn via Carrie Allen. And my website is the human array.com. And if you feel that this resonates with you and you'd like to talk more, I am open and willing to have any conversation to hear how it inspires you and what seed it plants for you. He really is. I can vouch for that. Okay. So find Carrie on Instagram, LinkedIn, or via her website. What closing remarks would you like to leave us with today? 
You're magnificent. You are too. Thanks, Care. Thank you.